Thank you. Over Thank to you. you. Thank you. I think the recording is on, right? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pinky Singh, uh, <clears throat> for my small and short introduction. Yes, uh, we are already running late, eight minutes. So yeah. I would really request uh, everyone to be active. I know it's difficult, as uh, Pinky Ma'am said, uh, after lunch. I do agree. By the way, I'm uh, having a very heavy cold today. So in between, my voice might get uh, disturbed. Please um, type in any queries in if you don't understand any word or a language you want me to uh, tell in, you please request in the chat box. And I hope somebody from a CIT team support team will help me out with the chat. So I'll concentrate more on my lecture. Sure, ma'am. We'll be there. Thank you so much. And... Uh, Today's uh, session is all about uh, interactivity. First of all, uh, I'm very happy uh, to see the pre-session survey form that many of you heard about uh, H5P. And also, I saw many of you tried to. Very interesting. So first, uh, in today's session, we will talk about interactivity. Then we'll talk about how we can build interactivity. And then uh, why we have to build interactivity, the importance of interactivity in uh, electronic content, digital content that we call it. And uh, <clears throat> one way, thanks to pandemic, that we are all very much equipped with uh, basic education technology, which we have been uh, trying past uh, almost 18 to 20 years, which we could see that uh, acceleration in past two, three years, which is pretty good. I'm working towards uh, more uh, towards higher education teacher empowerment, but still my first love is always uh, school education because I started my e-learning journey around 18 years back with uh, my daughter, teaching her. To teach her, I created uh, lessons and then I came to know about online learning and electronic learning and computer-based learning. That's how I started my journey. Though I'm a technologist, um, more towards pedagogy because I value uh, pedagogical engineering. So today's class, mostly all about how we can utilize one tool that is H5P uh, to create really a pedagogically strong interactive activities. Though the time is pretty short, in few hours, we can't really explore everything because it's an ocean. But I'll make sure that all of you will have a basic knowledge about interactivity. And uh, we will practice. I will demo first, and then we will practice together. And then you will have a small assignment to do in today's session. So it's going to be very, very <clears throat> active uh, um, session. So be ready for that. In between, I might ask you some questions too. So as of now, I don't know what you can see on my screen. Um, you can see my uh, slides, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. So um, today it's basically about, uh, as I said, interactivity in teaching learning processes. So what and why, how we can create, we can see a demo. And then we do some practical and um, assignments do you have that. Um, let me share my screen for you to interact with the device that you are joining today. And you can type in what comes to your mind first when we say interactivity in digital content. Okay, it could be a small phrase or it could be a small um, word. Okay, what comes? comes to your mind immediately the moment we say um, interactivity. Okay, let me share my screen, entire screen, so that uh, you will see. As I said, in between, I'll be asking uh, these kind of questions. So please be active. Use either your uh, laptop or uh, mm, your uh, smartphone to Ma'am, your okay. screen is not visible. Okay. 
I think it's my internet connectivity. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, sharing my screen. Entire screen would be a good idea. I don't know why uh, my share button is not active. Okay, now it is. Maybe internet connectivity is an issue. Okay. So now you, you all can see my screen with a QR code or you can join from slido.com and you enter this 2495803. That is the number. And then you type in that phrase or a word that comes to your mind when you hear the word interactivity. What comes to your mind as a teacher in your teaching learning process? When you think about interaction, what comes to your mind? I don't see anybody coming in. Only one participant. Okay, great. A phrase, exchange of information. This is anonymous. Don't worry. You don't have to type your name. So, <sighs> interactivity is again an interaction. Okay. Uh, participating mutually in the sense of two way communication, isn't it? Okay. Interesting. Don't use chat box. Did you just use this? Okay. Involvement. Yeah. Learner involvement. Game to activity. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Exchange of ideas. Interesting. There are around 140 people and 127, uh, around 124 of them are live. So I should see at least 100 words here or 100 phrases, isn't it? Conversation, involvement, eliciting ideas, wonderful. Uh, active learning, wow, I love that phrase. Digital stories, okay. You know something, um, interaction in the sense, like anything that we get interact with. For example, in earlier days, even um, of a, a tape recorder, you take it, for example, or a stereo player. We used to have a play, pause, rewind, but that's also an interaction, right? Even then in the traditional classroom, yeah. Short for learning, okay. Not boring learning, okay. You're almost coming there. Active, being active, right? Response and questioning, yes, that's all involved. Freedom of expression, wow, okay. Could be <clears throat> very interesting. Let's see, this is what happens when uh, collaboration happens, right? Communication and collaboration, like these kind of sessions. When we imagine this is a a face to face session. It'll be very interesting somebody expressing their thoughts. In an online session, it's always difficult. And uh, we are teachers, I mean, you also now experienced as an online teacher that you always get anxious what our learners are uh, trying to express. Right? But still, we'll try. Try to make it as engaging as possible with these kind of tools thanks to education technology. Great. This is how we see um, in, a, in, a, in a communication and a collaboration, right? And um, different perspectives of the same content. For example, I just asked you that 
interactivity what comes to your mind you can see now right kind of perceptions people have so ultimately what do you think uh, interactivity is all about what our dictionary says okay what is it in education technology and what is today's session is all about let us concentrate on that now i have seen questioning yeah uh, perceiving and responding okay transfer of information okay good very good thank you so much for this wonderful uh, interaction uh, somebody said in the chat also um, supportive learning and involving all sense organs that's wonderful answer <laughs> i'm sorry so let me share my screen. This is from the earlier workshop. Mm. When we take a dictionary's definition, when you look into a, a dictionary definition, it's an involvement of users, exchange of information. Either it could be uh, like in a traditional classroom or with computers and the degree to which this happens. That is very, very important. The last line, the degree to which this happens is interactivity. For example, uh, teaching learning environment interactivity is, it's all about that, that you talk about the content, the teacher, and to learners, right? the content that requires a students to interact with so that they will be engaged, actively participated. They don't passively take the information. For example, uh, you give them notes, uh, like written notes or a PDF if you take online environment or a hybrid environment. They're just going through it, right? You don't know exactly um what uh, they are really responding and then what their thoughts are all about you didn't give them an option to really interact with the content the way or uh, to understand what the learner is thinking or what his way of or uh, uh, interaction with the content that you provide them you can't really track that learner's interaction isn't it so in in an online learning environment Definitely in a hybrid learning environment with the kind of education technological tools we have, it is possible. When you talk about interactivity way back, way back, it's all like when there is, a, I think, only a, a system based, a computer, even just before a computer based um, learning is started, way back, more defined, that MG Moore defined interaction in three ways it's still all the education technologies consider these three styles of interaction that is between learner and learner between learner and teacher between learner on the content right so how it is possible in a teaching learning environment that is here remember today we are talking about you know uh, online learning environment either it could be a synchronous or asynchronous meaning live or offline but but electronic learning we are talking about so how this learner and learner is possible when you provide a uh, like a group activity it is possible right these days so you can see how they are interacting they are interacting there with their peers between learner and a teacher it could be individual between a student and a teacher, or it could be a teacher with a group of class, like uh, students in a class, in a session, right? It could be a generalized message. That's also an interaction. And learner and content. Sometimes, as I just said, PDF, instead of a PDF or a passive learning, you can provide an interactive multiple choice questions along with the content that you are presenting. So they can read and they can respond. They can watch the video and then they can take the notes and they submit the report. All that you can see, how much time they have uh, really uh, observed that particular piece of content that you have given them. 
For example, we can say that interactively, interactivity definitely promotes active learning. I saw that word active learning. What do we mean by active learning? They are engaged. The learners are more engaged with the content, right? And then it supports active participation, definitely. For example, uh, I just asked you a question and then you all interacted with a tool and then you type. And then I, I, I said that, okay, these many participants are replying and these many are not. And then that, that encourages them to be more active, right? So it supports and it promotes active learning. And then it gives us uh, teachers as an opportunity to track learners' behavior, how they are doing, what they are doing. Again, it depends on the kind of infrastructure and the teaching learning environment you have, the kind of tools we use. But definitely interactivity will promote this and then gives us this opportunity to track the behavior of the learner. Last but not least, and which is very, very important in interactivity is opportunity to communicate. Right? You, I'm sorry. You all give answers like, uh, uh, when I say interactive day questions, mutual uh, responding, and uh, yes, they, they all come under these four lines, isn't it? I hope you all agree with me. Opportunity to communicate. That is the first thing that either with the teacher or with the content, they are communicating. Sometimes they even give us, can give us a feedback. Or sometimes uh, when a teacher designs uh, interactive content, a teacher pre-decides what kind of a feedback that should go to my learner. That's also a way of communication, isn't it? So that gives us an opportunity to communicate not only uh, with the learner directly, that is synchronously in a live session, but also asynchronously offline. That, you, that definitely a student, especially in K-12 scenario, a student will definitely be uh, more um, engaged with the kind of a content if you give that a pre-inserted feedback. Hey, you did well. You might have, uh, you, you can try, try more to score more or something like that or a more constructive feedback that will definitely engage the learner and encourage the learner. So when we can talk hours and hours about interactivity, but then today's session is all about building interactive content, right? So how do we do that? How do we create interactive content where uh, 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 interaction can happen between learner and learner or between learner and a content and uh, or between learner and a teacher? Today, we will be talking about interactivity between a learner and a content or between a learner and a teacher with the help of a tool. You know, a tool that can help us to create interactive content is called an authoring tool. You know, what do we mean by author, right? Uh, usually in a, a tech terminology, authoring tools are those which we can create some uh, report-based online learning environments. For that, we have so many tools. If you take a commercial tools, it could be Adobe Captivate or Articulate Storyline. It could be your uh, course lab, or it could be simply a uh, video-based content, interactive content could be from TechSmith's uh, Camtasia, or it could be Articulate's Rise, right? And there are many, there are many that you can create. Even, uh, I don't know how many of you heard about VoiceThread and ThingLink. Like this, there are many tools that we can create interactive content. Again, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if I can understand that you all know basic of education technology, you all know about Bloom's Taxonomy and the TPAC, that is techno-pedagogical techno content knowledge that we call it. You all might have uh, a scene that at least got introduced to it. If not, you please search for that TPAC. T P A C K. Okay, that's uh, that, uh, that is a uh, Punya Mishra along with someone developed it. But then, why I um, mentioned T P A C K here is that whatever the tool that we consider for anything, we have to make sure that we have to give importance to the kind of environment that we are in. The kind of in environment here, in the sense, what are your learners' needs? What is the infrastructure you have? that how much your institution can support and then what kind of uh, uh, environment teaching learning process that really 
pedagogically strong teaching learning environment that you can build. So all these considerations should be there when you pick up any kind of a tool. Okay. Okay. That's in a nutshell about the technical pedagogical content knowledge. So here authoring tools are many. There are some commercial tools. There are free and open source tools. What do we mean by open source tools? There are some freemium tools too. What do we mean by premium? In the sense, uh, there might be some tools which are giving you, um, like for example, you take a iSpring where you can insert into PowerPoint and you can create uh, wonderful interactive options. But then it, it has only certain features only in a free version. Or maybe they'll put that, okay, this version will work only for these many days. The premium is something that you can have very basic features forever with a login option. And when you buy a premium one, you can have more and more. For example, you take a Kahoot. There are options for freemium and also premium. There are many tools like that. But then what is this free and open source? Open source is uh, in, a, I, I don't know how many, uh, I saw today's uh, response and I don't think many uh, technologists are here. So I just want to explain in a layman's terms that open source tool is something that uh, a tool which is developed and then the code behind that is released with a public license online in like in a Git, GitHub, where if you have the potential that if you, if you have the knowledge, you can always enhance that entire tool the way you want it. You can customize it the way you want it, not just look and feel of it, but also the functionality of the tool. So the code is publicly available, right? That is called an open source tool. Examples are like if you take a learning management system, that is Moodle. If you take a interactive content, that is H5P authoring tool is an open source. There are many like this, but then any open source tool, any tool, to run, you need an environment, right? Um, many, many, many. I, I get this uh, question many times that, oh, I used to do, I used to develop, I used to use H5P, but it is no more a free. It's asking me to buy. No, H5P is an open source tool. It's always free. It is always available. But the only thing is, it requires some environment to play around with. Many people they develop content in h5p.org which is a, just a, a site to for a testing purpose only remember it is only for a testing purpose okay we'll talk more about this uh, let me just give you a small introduction about uh, h5p it's a short form of html5 as i said it's an open source tool the code is publicly available to enhance it or to modify it, to add more functionality it or to reduce it, the way to match your teaching learning process, you can do whatever you want uh, with the help of a technologist. Okay. What makes it so special is that it's easy to use, not only easy to use as a learner, but also as an educator, we call it, as a facilitator or as a teacher. Also, it's easy to grab that knowledge to build such kind of content types. And you can easily not only create, but easily share and can be modified. Most importantly, it is responsive. What does it mean? Whatever the device that you play that, 99% it will play in that particular device. It's not that it is, it is a mobile friendly in layman terms. Like in a, in, a, in a regular terms, it is a mobile friendly software. So what we can do with H5P? Uh, we can create uh, interactive videos or you can have uh, where in, in between you can add some questions in a video or you can build crosswords or you can build branching scenarios where you can give a scenario and you can ask some questions and then Depending on the answer, that is adaptive learning, we call it. The learner can go to particular space. Or simply, you can have drag and drop options, right? Uh, you can just uh, give your user. And also, the best part about it is a feedback. You can provide nice 
feedback, immediate, either immediate feedback, like you see here in the video, it is playing, that immediately the moment they type. Or you can give them a, if it is a wrong, you can even give them a hint. It is possible with some kind of a content types. Most of the content types, the task-based ones, give us an opportunity to create feedback also. To give feedback is very, very important. And then I always respect uh, a quote. Uh, I forgot uh, the name. Uh, feedback is considered really constructive and very useful when learners start acting upon it. It's not just as a teacher, we give a feedback, but then we have to make sure that learners start acting upon it. We have to observe that the moment you give a feedback the next time uh, when you meet that learner or a student or when you see the next time test and there should be um, some improvement, isn't it? They, should, they shouldn't make the same mistake again and again. Okay. Coming to the content types in H5P, there are many, as many as 50 of them. Actually, more than 50 we have. So uh, inspired from uh, Stuart Mellar's work as part of one of my free courses for Open Education for Better World, I created this periodic table kind of a structure, dividing these H5P content types into various groups. Okay. It, some uh, content types of H5P are oh. the presentation tools where we can just present the content. You can't really add any tasks to it. So if you want to do only a task, then you can take choose these yellow ones. If you want to present content along with the task, then you can choose these orange ones. There are around six of them. There are audio based, but then you have to be very, very careful when you create an audio-based ones because a, right now, as of now, not really supporting all browsers. We have to pay attention to it. That's why that's where your feedback comes in again. That you have to see that who your learners are, what their needs, and then what how the what kind of infrastructure you have, whether they are accessing it in the same browser, then fine, you can create and share. <laughs> there are some beta version options also. We'll explore. I'll give you all the links to this interactive presentation also. So where you can click on each um, link, each uh, link, and you can see a tutorial from hyp.org. The beauty of this tool is that it got a very strong community. HYP community is pretty strong. I then <laughs> I would request participant to mute themselves. Thank you. So, yeah, we're talking about these content types. So depending upon your, uh, what you really um, require, what kind of assessment that you are building, depending on that, we will be choosing. And today we will be practicing it. Don't worry. We will be doing one of the toughest tasks only so that you will understand how, uh, what is the difference of this task and the presentations. I'm not touching this uh, presentation with tasks. I'm only doing a task-based one because uh, I think uh, Diksha is also supporting now Diksha portal or H5P and uh, to integrate uh, some interactive content, right? So how and where we can create this H5P? content. Either you should have H5P enabled website, like it could be your uh, WordPress site, or it could be your WordPress books, or you should be having an LMS learning management system. There, H5P3 plugin is there, you can create. Or you buy a license from H5P.com, that is a SaaS plan, we call it. What do you mean by SaaS? Software as a service. As I said, H5P is a software, it's an open source software, it needs an environment to run, right? So what these H5P.com people will do is they provide you that environment. So you buy, go there, or buy a license, and you start building your content and you share with the people. Fine. Or is there any desktop application? I don't have an LMS, either, either as a Moodle or a Blackboard or Brightspace or a Canvas. I don't have any LMS. So what should I do? You can use a desktop application called Lumi, or recently they have come up with an online version of Lumi. 
Lumi.in, uh, Lumi.education that we will be using today. We will be practicing on that only. Okay. And then uh, first of its kind in India, we are trying to build a interactive uh, uh, re content repository with the open license that is H5P catalog.in where uh, there in that repository quality really matters. People can just uh, sign in and then uh, it will be uh, once they sign in and it will be moderated, then approved. And then uh, when a person creates a content, it will be again uh, checked for a quality, then only it will be displayed in the catalog. Fine. And what is the uh, uh, Lumi and what is this, how this Lumi desktop application works? I will share uh, one small video that uh, if anybody wants to work with a desktop application, maybe uh, later when we take a break, um, I will share that. But right now, today we will be exp um, doing a demo and also practical in Lumi online version. But when you do, why I have included this screenshot is when you use a Lumi desktop application, you will have various options to export your files so that you can distribute, you can share your file with your users. When you don't have any learning management system or any site offline that you want to distribute your content, then simply you can have, you can export it as a simple HTML file. All it needs is a browser. Remember, HTML5 content type requires a browser to view. And coming to the later part, so everybody will ask me that, okay, fine, when I create a quiz or when I create a task, I want to see how user performed, um, how they interacted with the content. That's what I'm talking about, the tracking, right? So when you have an LMS-like model, you have a nice report over there. Uh, what is the completion status and what is the success criteria? Here, there are completion and success. How Moodle reads this uh, HYP uh, uh, content types is all about. When a user really achieves a maximum score, it is uh, considered as success. But then when they don't get a pass score or a complete score, then it is considered only completion. That means a user went through the entire activity but have not achieved that grade at all specified but what happens when i create a, a content with a lumi desktop application will i be able to uh, see the analysis how user interacted yes uh, there is an option called lumi analytics you can view it but then it is in a very primary a basic stage the analysis is even in online they introduced even there it is in a very primary or basic stage but there is a possibility and remember, HYP uh, exam mode might be coming pretty soon in the future. But right now, it is HYP is used only for a formative assessment, not for a summative one. Okay. So you can save uh, these uh, HYP content types as a HTML or a SCOM application using a Lumi or in your LMS or a content management system like a WordPress, you can directly create and share and distribute. And then also you can provide an option for the user to download and reuse. Okay, so now I'll just do a screenshot demo of Lumi Education. Then I will go on to the site, I will show you, and then you will start practicing. So we will take a small break after I do a, a screenshot demo, after asking you some questions. Um, if there is any uh, interaction that you want to do, we'll do it. And then we'll take a small break and then we'll continue with a demo and practical. Okay. Fine. When you first access this Lumi.education, this is the screen that you will see. We are not using a desktop application. We are doing online. So you will click on login option and then you are prompted to log in with a username and your email ID and you have to log in. I don't have to explain these basic steps because we are all equipped with the basic ed tech options, right? Um, as I said, blessing in disguise is pandemic that it taught many simple things to all of us. So the moment you say login, you can provide your G 
mail account and then you just create an account over there and you will receive a mail and then you approve that mail and then you will be able to log in simply here back again. But then when you log in, you will see the dashboard like this, public content, my content, create new content, upload your content and shared links. Remember the content created here will be uh, shared with the OER hub, we call it, interactive OER hub, which is 98% uh, it is complete. Pretty soon they are going to launch with all the open content created uh, with H5P. It's a hub from all over the world. Recently in March, when, I, uh, when I've been to OE Global Conference, I met uh, people uh, that who created around 10,000 quality in quotes, interactive content in their own language, Spanish. I, I'm really, really wondered to see that bank of them with the open license by the way so I, I i hope you all know what is open educational resources are and how we can use the open license so we can always repurpose them depending upon the license terms right so this is the this uh, uh dashboard that you will see and then we'll click on a create a new content and we'll be creating a quiz okay we will be creating a quiz so what kind of a quiz, a quiz that we will be creating? We will see that quiz right away. I'll show you how it looks like. Um, let me show you that quiz. Can you all see my screen uh, with Alumni Education? Yes, ma'am, you can. Yeah. So we all will be creating this kind of a quiz. This is with a drag and drop. Okay, the, sorry, this is in Telugu. And uh, this is, I'll mark the words. And this is about uh, kind of a, um, uh, multiple choice question and this is a drag the words okay so we will be creating this kind of a interactive content pretty soon so now let me just come back to this okay let me share once again i've shared my entire screen i just want to show you something that uh, why i have taken uh, your uh, survey so that i will understand and what kind of a subjects are there and then what is the experience level with the uh, H5P, okay? Around uh, uh, 40 of them, okay? 51% uh, said for this that, have you um, ever heard of a H5P? And 40, 51.9% and then 48, that is around 38 people or 37 people, how many? 37 people said they never heard about it. That's fine. That's why the, I will understand the level of my participants so that I can tell from scratch. So now I will see that there are many languages and also math and uh, science people are here. And also I saw that uh, very interesting subject, pedagogy, pedagogy of physical science. Wonderful. I would love to see any kind of uh, uh, interactive content in that subject too, right? Uh, environmental education is there and uh, social science and math and languages and then the classes they teach is also in K-12, right? We will see that. I will also share some repositories with the open license, these interactive contents. You can always repurpose them also. But before that, we will create content. So let me, uh, before I uh, show you a demo, let me ask you if you have any doubts till now. 
because there are more than 40% they said they haven't heard about H5P, right? I mean, I've been uh, talking uh, about H5P past uh, almost six years. It's been seven and a half years, I think it launched. So I'm very much involved uh, with the uh, H5P team, core team. Uh, with uh, So, uh, I mean, imagine three, four years back, me talking about H5P and then now uh, in 2022, after 2020, when I, I, like now most of them know about H5P, it's a very um, welcoming uh, uh, scenario. I really love it. So I would love to listen from any of you. If you have any doubts, please type in or unmute in one by one. Please ask me any question if you are, we are able to unmute and talk. Any question till now, before I really demo it. And then you will be creating along with me. The same kind of a quiz in your I'm subject. Sure I understand. In your subject. What happened? Two, two people raised their hand. Okay. Indra Subramanian. Yes. And yes, please go ahead. And uh, Madhu Sudan KS. Uh, sir asked about is it possible to launch Madhu Sudan KS? Okay. Is it possible to launch? An yeah, you, you, but it supports either Drupal or a WordPress. Okay. Or you have a learning management system. Okay. Very good. Very good question here from Rana Anjum. And uh, are H5P and Lumi the same? Lumi is just an application to create H5P as of now. Maybe in future, they might uh, launch another tool to create interactive content, right? So Lumi is an application to create interactive content. For example, you take a PowerPoint presentation. It's an uh, Microsoft PowerPoint is an application. Either you create a PDF out of it or you create PowerPoint. That's an application, right? Lumi is an application where you create H5P content type. Okay. And where is it available? Senthil, sir, we will be doing right now. Okay. Should we install? No. You, you don't have to install H5P in an offline structure right now. And we are using online. Yes. And uh, even we can work offline if you install Lumi application. Earlier, there, there is no such chance to work offline. But recently, they launched Lumi desktop application past one and a half years that we are working on that. And then why do we call H5P? It's based on Java and then HTML5. It's a short form of H HTML5. Krishnamurti, sir. And then Rajesh Kolluri, sir, ma'am, only a few quiz tools are available in the free version. Sir, uh, I told you that H5P is a free software. I'm sorry. But when you're talking this, uh, uh, Rajesh, sir, I'm answering your question that maybe you have a, uh, you registered in H5P.org. They clearly mention that that site is only for a testing purpose. But unfortunately, I have seen thousands of Indian content over there. Thousands of them. They created and just left it. But very soon, all that content is going to be a open with an open license, by the way, that will come into OER Hub. And now, see, when they launched, they launched with all the content types, I think around 7 or 10 or 15 of them. And then uh, we all used to log in and then test all of them. And then when it works fine, or we used to contribute and we used to tell them this is the feature that we require for this. We used to communicate. For that purpose, we used it. But unfortunately, teachers used that site thinking that from here they can share with the learners. And then when the user base is huge, how much they can support. So they started giving only few options to test which they feel that testing is very much required. Right? Okay. Now, Sunish, is Lumi the only application to get? Ah, yes. As of now, free application is only this. And then if you have a LMS or a WordPress site, there is a free H5P plugin. Okay. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Why do we call it H5P? I told you uh, from Chitra Durga, uh, Halesh GT. Uh, so we call it H5P because HTM, it's based on HTML5. It requires HTML5 to view it. It's a short form of it. They just named it, okay, based on Java, where we can go offline with a Lumi application. Okay, uh, I think uh, in last uh, uh, time when I uh, trained, uh, we used a Lumi desktop application. I will show, do, uh, I think a CIT team will share those videos also with you. Okay. Yes, you can download your work. Thank you, sir. Um, I mean, we can download the app. Yes, you can download Lumi application. Yes. Okay. Uh, Shailaja, ma'am, uh, can you just tell me what I have to explain? And is it possible to use H5P in every subject? Oh, yes, you can. But to type certain type of equations in either in a chemistry or a mathematics or uh, even some physics or, or equations, you require a basic knowledge of LaTeX. And I prepared one slide uh, information on that. I will share. It is available in H5P catalog, by the way. Okay. I will share. Don't worry, math teachers. Um, no, we are not Indra. Uh, 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 I don't know who is this. Uh, PD underscore Indra. We are not using in hyp.org. We are using in lumi.education. Okay, computer requirement. If you are using a Lumi desktop application, they have given that they need a 64-bit system. Okay. Uh, okay. Rajesh Kolori, sir, will Diksha allow to publish the Lumi content? Lumi content is nothing but H5P, right? So now I think I want CIET team to answer this. Um, I heard Diksha is supporting H5P, but I want them to clarify this doubt. Um, yes, it supports MacBook, Mazun. I'm working on a Mac, but it requires the latest browser. Okay. Okay. Now I'm creating a, don't worry, Shalja, ma'am. Uh, I will explain, I will show you. We all will be doing it together. Okay, what is H5P in LMS? LMS is a learning management system. Okay, Madhusudan answering, it supports H5P, I don't know. Um, are you from uh, CIT? Inclusive education, absolutely, Zakir, sir. Yes. You are talking about inclusive in the sense accessibility because recently I have done a course, a free course on creating accessible digital content where I have given an example of H5P. Yeah, H5P LMS, let me tell you. LMS is a learning management system. In a learning management system, you will have H5P, okay? Uh, next, computer. Requirements right now, online, we will be doing even on your mobile phone. CWSN cases. Uh, sorry, sir. Zakir, sir, can you? Is it? Uh, okay, Masudan, sir, is using it for Diksha, it seems. Please uh, contact him for any kind of doubts you have. Yeah, Ravi Shankar sir, is there any option for us to get the students' responses without hosting on LMS like Moodle? Also, is there any option to run H5P offline? I mean to run locally, client side only. Yes, that is from a Lumi desktop application. That's what I explained, Ravi Shankar sir. I will share those videos last time um, when you did. And all this information, because this is an open source tool, both of them. So you have a very good information online, okay? Uh, yes, local language it supports Vyasaraj Venkatramna Raju. I think you are from a Telugu state, one of these Telugu states. I'm really proud. Uh, I'm a big Telugu lover. I work for a Telugu language uh, interactive content too, a lot. I developed earlier too. Yes, it supports all languages. Uh, mobiles also. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's go on. Let's uh, create now. Uh, let me do a demo step by step and you all will be doing it, okay? I will tell you first to all of you to register in one URL. You all will be doing it. First registration only, then we'll take a small break, okay? Now, all of you, please uh, 
see my desktop. Okay, let me log out first. Uh, because I said uh, I'm actively involved with the core team, any of you can get involved because you can contribute um, to them in the chats or requesting of features so that you can get involved. Of course, I am with the Merlot uh, Skills Commons, uh, their senior instructional designer for their HYP project. That's why I had a little more interaction, more interaction with them. And I'm also a pretty old user of HYP. And uh, I call myself a HYPN. Okay, I have given a URL in the chat. All of you, please come here. And then if you don't have uh, account, this is what you will see. You give a username that you want to, um, one name, one word, and then give your email address, then give a, your chosen password, then click on I agree to the terms, and then click on register. You will receive a mail. All of you could do it. Please do that. If you have any issue, please unmute and talk to me. Once you all comfortable with this, we'll take a break. Once you all register. Okay. You click on that register. I already have, once you register, you will receive a mail and then uh, click on that. And then you accept that mail. Then you come again to this Lumi. Oh, great. Great, sir. If you have a desktop Lumi, please uh, um, work on that extensively, but try to do this online along with us so that you can share your work with us. Good. You already registered, many of you. I want to see more like that messages in the chat box. Either yes, if you have a problem, type in. If you are done, just say yes. I hope this is my password. I don't know. Yes. This is the dashboard. When you come here, you please come to dashboard. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Vijay Kumar, sir, don't use a desktop today. Okay. Today, we all will use online. In, in desktop application, there is nothing called registered. You just download it and use it. Online only, we will register. Thank you. What is this screenshot is all about uh, Madhusudan, sir. Okay, great. Registered. Wonderful. Then uh, anybody from CIT team, can we take a 10 minutes break now? I'll be here only. Uh, I just want to grab a hot water. If you regard registration, please do let me know. Great. If you are registered, just have a cup of coffee or a tea. In 10 minutes, we will start. I think uh, you can stop recording, ma'am. Um, I'm not sure I understand. Is there an option to upload a lot of questions which I typed in Excel to create H5P MCQ? Ravishankar, sir. Yes, I want these kind of doubts to be asked in, uh, in an active session like this. Yes. So not in uh, all content types it supports, but certain content types it support, but not directly as you think in one go. Okay. And then, as I said, whenever we see a tool, actually, I think I missed that slide. I wanted to tell you about hots and lots. Higher order thinking skills and lower order thinking skills. As teachers, you all might be knowing about this. Bloom's taxonomy, right? Whenever we see a tool, whenever you see, for example, here, H5P content type, you should see that 
what kind of assessment that you want to create, right? Yeah, it's the response while registering, registered. You will receive a mail and then you accept that mail and again log in with the credentials that you gave. Okay, great. So is Pinky Ma'am is here or anybody from CIET? Support team? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Can we have a 10 minutes break? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. We can have. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. We'll be back by 15-20. Uh, okay, 3-20. Okay. Yeah. Sure.